other parties trade in fear, fear of immigrants demonising people on benefits. But to build a decent, humane society, we start with hope. We have a positive alternative. Let's have a trade deal with Europe. Let's cooperate with them as friends, but make our own laws. And let's take back control of our borders. I'm not even going to pretend that I haven't made mistakes. I have. I put my hands up when I have, and I've learned from them. But what you will get from me and from the Liberal Democrats is this. The grit and the resilience to finish the job. I won't pretend I don't want Scotland to be independent. I do. But as long as Scotland remains part of the Westminster system, the SNP will seek to work with others of like mind across the UK. Now, tonight, you're going to hear a lot of people claiming a lot of things. But please remember, these are the same people who claimed that if we followed our plan, unemployment would go up, that the deficit wouldn't come down, the economy wouldn't grow. Plaid Cymru offers an alternative. We offer hope for a decent future for our young people. For five years, wages haven't kept up with bills. For five years, the NHS has been going backwards. For five years, our young people have been fearing they'll have a worse life than their parents. We're a nation of great inventors. Like that, and there's homeless people in the streets who've been into services. Not from the when, well, I, I think it's I good to say... Really when I hear the Conservatives talk about the choice between competence and chaos, just imagine, David Cameron, the chaos in people's lives. The people who in the NHS don't know whether you're going to find the money. The people who don't know whether their nursery or their college or their schools are going to close. That's why Johnny's right. You need to take it a balanced approach. Nick is wrong about our plans because, of course, we are going to raise five billion from tax evasion and aggressive tax avoidance as we've done in this Parliament. And that's part of the balanced plan that also involves putting more money into our NHS and cutting taxes You're not for working ask people. The very wealthy but to here, the, the, the very wealthy include income. some of the tax avoiders and evaders. It's, it's really ironic, isn't it, hearing Nick Clegg and David Cameron argue when they've been hand in glove imposing austerity on the people of this country for the last five years. You've been balancing the books on the backs of the poor. 79,000 no, we've actually done it in a balanced 79, way. The books are balanced. We've got a 90 billion 70, deficit. 79, I mean, what's going on here? Can we get real, please? Hard. There you go again. <laughs> You can't, you can't talk about the present and you can't talk about the future, so you want <coughs> to talk about the past. I think people at home will want to know what are we going to do for them in the next five years. What I'm hearing is more debt and more taxes, more debt and more taxes, a lot more debt and more taxes. Can I, can I, look, I, I think well, one of the things we've learned is that there's not anything that Nigel Farage won't blame on foreigners. Uh, actually, the pressures on our health service, many of them are... OK, here's a fact. And I'm sure the other people will be mortified that I dare to talk about it. There are 7,000 diagnoses in this country every year for people who are HIV positive, which is not a good place for any of them to be, I know. But 60% of them are not British nationals. This kind of scaremongering no, rhetoric it's a fact. is dangerous. It's, a fact. it's dangerous, it divides well, it's communities, true. and it creates <laughs> stigma to people who are ill, and I think you no, ought to doesn't. be ashamed of yourself. Well, I'm sorry, we've got to put our own people first. When, when somebody is diagnosed with a dreadful illness, my instinct is to view them as a human being, mm. not consider mm. what country they come from. I would say to everybody at home that use your vote at this election as a weapon to fight for the future of our National Health Service, because it needs to be rescued from you, David. What about mid -staffs? Because, because I've got to say, over, over 13 years, the Labour government transformed an NHS from 18-month waiting to 18-week waiting. That's our record. Edward Man is simply that, wrong on the figures. There are more nurses, more doctors, more people being treated, and that's because we have a strong economy. And to make our NHS more efficient, to deal with some of its problems, what we need to do is take the whole market mechanism out of the NHS. Nick Clegg. Well, look, we've heard lots of warm words here about the NHS. Of course, we all love the NHS, but the NHS doesn't need warm words. It needs hard cash. But Mrs Merkel, who is the real boss in Europe, as we all know, has made it perfectly clear we can, you can negotiate lots of things over the next couple of years, but you cannot renegotiate the free movement of peoples within the European Union. Do you accept or not that in your renegotiation, free movement is not up for discussion. I don't accept that. Nigel is basically really? saying, give up before you've begun. No, In no, fact, if you look at my track record on Europe, <laughs> I said, we I have the European budget. People <laughs> said it was impossible. We cut that European budget. So instead of giving up, let's get stuck in and negotiate. And the problem with Nigel in the end is ultimately, Nigel, you're just the back door to a Labour government.